Hey guys, Rich from GunTortureTest.com. Uh, ever since I posted the video of Eric in the match, I've uh, I've gotten a lot of requests uh, for I've gotten a lot of requests to do a video on how to tune your high point mags and and maybe polish a feed ramp and stuff. Um, it's pretty simple stuff. This magazine in my right hand, which is loaded is a factory fresh stock out of the box magazine okay it came out of this box out of this unfired gun okay um and here's what it looks like up top we getting that okay this is a magazine right here that i've tuned and this is one of the magazines that was used on saturday last saturday for the match i don't know if you're gonna be able to tell the difference or not but i'll put the two side by side okay here's the factory fresh magazine and here's the tuned magazine. If you look at the lips, okay, this magazine here, the lips have been spread out just a hair. This magazine is still factory fresh. Now, the reason for this, and this is any magazine, it's not just high points, guys. Okay, I'm getting a lot of, uh, I'm getting a lot of flack because you know people are saying, well, high points are still junk, this, that, and the other thing. And Rusty, my camera operator, uh, just asked me 15 minutes ago, hey, Rich. Why do you have such a hard-on for high points? The thing is, I don't have a hard-on for them necessarily, okay? I'm certainly not a paid spokesperson, but I'm a dealer, okay? And in this day and age, when there's so many people living paycheck to paycheck or under the poverty line, you know, the Second Amendment says we have the right to keep and bear arms. The Second Amendment doesn't say we have the right to keep and bear arms if we can afford a $1,000 gun, okay? So that's why I'm kind of big on the high points. Most of the time, fresh out of the box, they're going to be fine. As evidenced by last Saturday, the gun that we used for the match, that wasn't the case. There was a few failed defeats. And they were caused by one of two things. They were caused by the magazine just needing a little tuning, or they were caused by having to polish the feed ramp. Okay? I don't know if you're going to be able to see in here or not. Okay? But that's a polished feed ramp. We get, is that, it's going to have to lower it down. So. There you go. Right there? Okay. Lower the gun. Stop. Okay. Up there. That's a polished feed ramp. Now, for some context, this is a fresh out of the box high point that I have not done any work to. I don't know if you notice a difference or not. The difference is, is that for whatever reason, High Point paints the feed ramps with the same paint that they use on their barrels. And I don't know what it is. It's not, they're not parkerized and it's not dirt coat. The closest thing that I can come to to consider it would be something like engine paint, okay? Some high temperature spray paint. And sometimes, you know, that paint causes issues because it's on the feed ramp and with some kinds of ammo, especially if you have ammo that's maybe a little more pointy on the nose, it's going to cause what we, uh, what we call nose diving, which is that. That bullet is not sitting right in the magazine, okay? That's the right way. Well, <laughs> that's the way it should sit, okay? So when the receiver... Or when the slide comes back, okay, and the extractor pops a shell out, and the slide comes back forward, it strips another bullet off the top, okay, and it's just supposed to go up and in, boom, okay, up and in. If the magazine needs a little tuning, or if the feed ramp isn't perfect, okay, you get what's called nose diving, which is that, okay, and what will happen is, like, pretend my, my fingernail, here's the thumb, the, uh, the feed ramp okay it'll just do that and then it'll get hung up and that's a fail to feed so what I did on the match gun is I polish the feed ramp and I tune the magazines the easiest way to tune a magazine and this is any magazine for any gun okay you got a multi-tool or needle nose pliers I mean you don't need a stupid expensive Gerber multi-tool like I have um, you know, I got it because I don't know. I don't even know when I got this. I think I got it when I was in the service. Um, the easiest way to do it, 
okay, is to depress the follower, just like that. Just grasp, okay, and just tweak out a little bit. Now, I'm not going to do it on this magazine because this is one of the fresh magazines, okay. Um, or no, it's not actually. This is one I, no, I don't think I tuned that later. Um, for some context, again, this is before and this is after. And like I said, you just take and tweak just a hair, just a hair. If you're going to polish the feed ramp on anything, okay, there's a lot of people on YouTube, okay, there's a lot of people on YouTube saying take a Dremel tool and, and you know, go after the innards of your gun with a Dremel tool. Don't. Please, sweet baby Jesus, don't. Okay? Unless you know what you're doing, okay? You're talking about a little rotary tool that might spool up to 7,000 or 10,000 RPMs. Okay? It's really easy to damage the inside of your gun. Okay? It's almost too easy to do it. So unless you really know what you're doing, and if you absolutely have to do it, at least get one of these. Now this is a Dremel, it's a Dremel stylus, and you hold it like a pen, and it gives you so much more control than the old school, uh, okay? You hold it like a pen, and it gives you a lot of control. But generally, if it were me, and as in this case it was, you just take emery paper, okay? Here's some fine grit emery paper, or you can, you know, you can substitute that with with really fine grit automotive body, auto body uh, sandpaper. Okay, it's maybe take a little longer, but you're not going to chew up your gun. Okay, and all you do is you take that paint. Remember how the difference is black paint here. You take that paint off the feed ramp and you take it down to bare metal. That's what polishing a feed ramp is. Okay, it's not some voodoo magic gunsmith trick. It's you take take the paint off. Now, what I've done for the purposes of this, I'm going to fire two magazines. Now you're thinking, but Rich, how are you going to fire two magazines? You're in your store. Well, guess what, guys? I've got a bullet trap. That's right, a bullet trap. Awesome. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fire these two magazines, the one I tuned and the one I didn't tune, out of this gun where I polish the feed ramp. And we're not going to have a single fail to feed. As always, eyes and ears. I'm just using my cheap earplugs. Gun is empty. First, I'm going to use the magazine that I did to. Obviously, it might get a little loud. This bullet trap isn't terribly loud. Um, I know they can barely hear it next door when I use it, and I use it a lot. Uh, so here we go. Ta-da! Nice, smooth. Oh, I had to fail to eject, though. <laughs> fail to eject. Now, the magazine that I didn't tune. And it fed perfectly. Another fail to eject. For all you safety Nazis, here we go. This repair takes all of, takes about four and a half seconds with a pair of pliers. And depending on how impatient you are, a few minutes with some emery paper or fine grit sandpaper. Okay? Like I said earlier, it's not that I have a hard on for high points, although for what they are, I think they're amazing, amazing machines. Um, but as somebody who sells them and sells a lot of them, okay, and as somebody who does recommend them if you're on a very, very tight budget, okay, 
two simple things, two little simple DIY projects is all you need. If your gun doesn't run good out of the box, okay, I can't explain why this specific gun decided to want it to act up, okay. Maybe the, the, the paint on the feed ramp was a little thicker than normal. I don't know. Maybe it was the ammunition. Maybe it was the magazine needed tuning. I don't know. Okay? I really don't. I don't have I don't have an explanation for that. Okay? But I do have a simple fix. And I just showed you that. Um, Ten minutes of work. And you can get this thing tuned just perfect. And this gun actually... September, I think. I'm going to take the same gun now that I've tuned it. I'm going to take the same gun uh, out to Oil Capital and I'm going to shoot a match. Okay. Um, I'm just getting to where I'm physically able to do that kind of stuff again. So uh, in September, I'm probably get, you're probably going to see another video with this specific high point. I can't sell this gun now. I'm kind of emotionally attached to it at this point. Um, so this is going to be a another one of those kind of weird guns that I have that I don't really have any purpose for. But I will. Oh, the serial number. Yeah, good call, Russ. Um, just so you get... Well, hell, why don't I just put it up there? I'm going to do the last four on the serial number. This is 4506. We got that in focus? No? No? Yes? No? Well, I can confirm it's 4506. Yeah, Russ, yeah. you can confirm it's 4506. And if you guys recall, on Saturday, Eric read off the last four digits of the serial number. And a couple days before that, when I did the little breakdown on this gun, I let right off the last four digits of serial number. It's the same gun. And I'm going to shoot it probably September uh, in an IDPA match, probably down at Oil Capital. Um, just because, I don't know, because I hate letting stuff go. I'm like a pit bull. When I, you know, when I want to make a point, by God, I want to make that point. Um, I can't really think of anything else to say. If you have any questions... Uh, specifically, um, you know, by all means, ask them. Leave a comment. Send me a private message. Uh, you know, send me a PM on Reddit if, if you're a gun editor and you you, know, you want to ask me a question. Um, you know, by all means, have at it. Um, I guess that's it. A little simple DIY fix for uh, a sticky high point. Lots of oil. Keep it clean. And uh, have fun shooting, guys. This is Rich from GunTortureTest.com. See you next time.